Welcome to the word for the week. These days, I'm losing my memory quite a bit, and I'm sure a lot of you are as well. Experts are saying that this is a normal thing because of the chronic stress that we're going through. And sometimes we may forget who God is during these times, or forget those moments where God has brought deliverance in the past. I want to teach you something today, Psalm 105, and it's about a prayer of remembrance. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wondrous works. Remember, and there's that key word that we're going to look at. Remember the wondrous works that he has done, his miracles, and the judgments he uttered. So the three things that will pop up, again, works, miracles, judgments. And our question that we're looking at is, what should Jews remember in prayer? But we're going to take this template, this pattern, and we're going to apply it in a Christian setting instead. Number one, remember that God remembers. Verse eight, he remembers his covenant forever. And especially in this prayer, it's going to be applied to land. So jumping to verse 11, saying, to you, I will give the land. And that comes again towards the end. So this Jewish prayer is giving thanks to God for the promised land. Number two, remember the humble beginnings. And the psalmist goes in verse 12, When Israel was few in number, wandering from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another people, he allowed no one to oppress them. Thus this psalmist remembers in prayer how God was with them even at the very beginning. Number three, remember the forefathers. When he summoned a famine on the land, notice now he's going to bring up several different characters. He had sent a man ahead of them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. Notice the descriptions about Joseph here that seem a little out of place on how you and I pray, but this guy is going to bring it up here. His feet were hurt with fetters. Those are chains. His neck was put in a collar of iron. He sent Moses, his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen. Number four, remember the judgments. And now... The psalmist is remembering the plagues that God sent to Egypt. Nine out of ten plagues this psalmist is going to list out right here for us. He sent darkness. He made the land dark. Verse 29. He turned their waters into blood, caused their fish to die. Their land swarmed with frogs. Number five. The psalmist now remembers the journey and the wandering in the wilderness. God spread a cloud for the covering and fire to give light by night. They asked, and he brought quail, that story about wanting meat. And he gave them bread from heaven in abundance. When they were looking for water, he opened the rock and water gushed out. And it flowed through the desert like a river. And then finally, he remembers the fulfillment. And so he brought his people out with joy, his chosen ones with singing, and he's focusing on the land here. He gave them the land of the nations. And then he ends the psalm, praise the Lord. You may be asking, why would anyone choose to pray like this? It seems so weird to the way we pray now. I want you to look at business for a second. And branding experts will tell us that a company's story, how it all got started, that is one of the most powerful tools that, that businesses have in order to tell their employees, this is who we are. And you go to any business's website, and you will usually find a history tab that tells us about us. Put it another way, people that struggle with Alzheimer's or dementia, one of the interesting techniques that's being used for them is something called reminiscence therapy, where they're there to remind the patients what the past was like. And I want you to see a brief glimpse of it here. Glennertown Square is a treatment center that's helping improve the lives of people with Alzheimer's disease and dementia. And town Square is designed to look like a town from somewhere between 1953 and 1961, meant to reflect the era when most of the participants were young adults. People make their strongest memories typically between the ages of 10 and 30. Um, and if you think about it, the reason that that is, is because people typically have their, a lot of lives first at that time. Graduating high school, graduating college, marriage, children, jobs. Helping people recall and discuss these major life events is part of reminiscence therapy, one of the core concepts of Town Square's program. Reminiscence therapy often uses prompts like old photos and memorabilia to elicit reactions, trigger memories, or improve the mood of people with dementia. 
Let's review the template that's found in Psalm 105. And you see five things that Jews should remember in prayer. There's the humbled beginnings, forefathers, judgments, journey, fulfillment. Now, if you apply this in a Christian sense, here's what you get. We also remember the humble beginnings. Try to remember what life was like before Jesus. Second part. Instead of remembering forefathers, we're going to remember key people in your faith journey. Who would that be? For me, it was my youth pastor. Next, we're going to remember judgments. But the judgments for Israel were always about setbacks to the fulfillment of the covenant. And so I want you to think about what were the setbacks and how did God help you overcome some of those setbacks. Next, we're going to see the journey. Let's remember God's work or miracles. How did he show up? How did he provide during those journey moments before the fulfillment? And then finally, remember the fulfillment. We're not going to talk about land because in the Christian sense, we don't get the promised land until really heaven. But what we get instead right now is the new covenant is about resurrection and it's about the Holy Spirit. And so we're going to end our prayer on that. So I would invite you right now, take time. Pause the video right here on this screen and take a look at five different things and bullet point this prayer. If you take three minutes just to jot down bullet points, I think you're going to trigger some incredible emotions and memories that wouldn't have happened if you didn't do this exercise. We hope you have a great rest of the week. We will see you on Sunday.